Hey folks, this is Barry the Beer Guy with iBuyOldBeer.com. In the last beer can video that I made, before I went out in the backyard and grabbed a box of cans, I told my wife if one person responds to my video, it will have been worth it. And you can tell by the high production values I have here and the rapid cuts, uh, the cutting edge technology, basically a guy in Minnesota in his basement talking to you without any pauses, uh, <laughs> who collects empty beer cans for a hobby, well, that's what you're going to get here. And I've had many people that either collected cans as a kid, have hauled their cans around through four or five moves, or have inherited a can collection, or better yet, are remodeling their bathroom, barn, garage, and they find the remnants of a work crew from 40 or 50 years ago. What are you going to do when you finish your beer? Put them in the drywall hide them somewhere so the boss won't find out what you've been doing. And you can tell, uh, I've even had cans engraved with the date that they were put in the wall and that's kind of cool, they tell a story. But what I'm going to do here is, it's a brief beer can video, I won't cover everything, but if you're faced with one can you found in a wall, a box of cans you've been hauling around, a collection, uh, you cleaned out a storage unit, however, you came across cans. So we're gonna start with the easiest cans, the you know the ones that I tell people, aluminum cans a lot of times, you can recycle with a good conscience. There aren't a lot of valuable aluminum cans. And now with the craft beer boom, there are literally new cans coming out each day and it's hard to keep up as a can collector. But we're gonna go from easiest and hopefully make your decisions easier if you're faced with a boatload of cans, a truckload of storage unit. And then we're gonna go back to the earliest or harder to get and more valuable cans. So in the early days of can collecting, the more cans you had, the better your collection was. You would see kegs next to someone's name in the collector's uh, guide of nationwide collectors. And if you had five kegs, each of them signifying 250 cans, you had a heck of a collection, over a thousand cans. But people in those days would collect cans for differences of a zip code a brewing location like oh this Budweiser can has five locations where it was brewed but I found one with six it's got Newark New Jersey therefore a different can so you might see 10 different Budweiser cans all next to each other but the person that collects them God bless their heart thinks they're all different but let's start with a general you have cans you want to know what's worth saving and what's worth throwing this is called the stay tab can and that's what we have nowadays. There's different variations of this. There's the thumb ripper, one that has two holes. And this was basically after the pull tab can, they came out with this stay tab can because the opening stayed on the can. Uh, certain states like Oregon did not have pull tab cans because they didn't want people stepping on them in the beach or have the, the litter and such. So this is a stay tab can, a Bush can from the 90s it really doesn't have much value. A dime to a quarter, if your time is worth trying to pedal these, by God, go for it. But a lot of times when I get aluminum cans like this in a collection, they are so plentiful, put them in the recycling. Uh, that doesn't apply to every can. There are certain Ham's aluminum cans that could be worth a buck to $5, and those were made in the 60s and a little more hard to get. But this is just a general overall rule. These stay tab cans, aluminum like this, they aren't worth much. We move on now to pull tab cans. <clears throat> and a lot of people will tell me too, it's got the tab on the top, it was opened on the bottom. Well, that was how collectors did it back in the day. They thought by leaving the tabs intact that they would be more valuable. Well, that does kind of apply. I don't know, not totally, but these are the next oldest cans. This 007 can is valuable because there are 007 fans and it's a pretty scarce can. This Swinger can from California, the Meyer Brewing Company, also has value too. These pull tab cans though, they have to be something different or special or unique to have a lot of value. Overall, if you find these, you know they can be a buck to five bucks for the common brands. And big brewers like Schlitz and Budweiser and Miller put out a boatload of these cans. So in general, they've gotta be from a smaller brewer 
something unique and they can be worth a little more with these pull tabs on them, but you've got to do your homework. A good suggestion is go to eBay ended sold auctions. You'll a lot of times find a can like this, maybe has been out there for two years at a crazy price. No one's bought it, but go to sold or finished auctions and look up your brand and make sure it's the same can. All right, <clears throat> now we go back into the early pull tabs. And I think the zip tab, as it was called, came into vogue around 1962. A guy named Irmo Fraze, I believe <laughs> was his name, and he came up with this unique top for Continental Can. It was their proprietary opening can, but this is a zip tab and it's intact on top of the can. They open it on the bottom with an ice pick. And this is an old German brand from Maryland. Uh, this is a Weedman from Kentucky. And this is called a fan tab, but you see that unique shaped opening. If you see any cans like this that have that unique shaped opening, set them aside, they could be valuable. I'm not gonna put a blanket statement on what they may be worth because there are thousands of them. So do your research, but here we're getting a little older into the, well, into the 60s anyway, back to the early 60s. Then we go to what's called a punch top or flat top can. Uh, you needed to have what was called a church key or an opener to pierce the lid on these to get into the top of them. Now you can tell this is a punch top because both ends are flat like this. And this one is an older can because of the size of the church key that went into it. I'm showing you this, which is an olive drab can. They use these on military bases and ship them to the troops in World War II. And they were a military uh, commodity or something they supplied to the troops. They will often say withdrawn free of export tax. But as you can see, that's an olive drab can. And they use this coating to prevent soldiers from getting shot with a reflective lid, but they actually had special military cans. And this would be uh, a late, like, uh, I don't know, probably in the 60s, some of the small brewers did not switch over to pull tab cans, but you can see this is what they call a flat top with the gray lid. And this is the newer of the punch top or flat top cans. Here is another example of that, a Kingsbury, but you can see with this little pressure bead around the edge, two punches, that would increase the flow of the beer. And this is in nice glossy shape. If you find cans like this that are punch tops that took an opener to open, uh, save them, set them aside. These do have value. Again, the big brewers, Schlitz, Miller, Bud, etc put these out by the millions. So a lot of times the big brewers aren't as valuable as the small little regional brewers. All right, now here we go back to, see that big punch in the top. And this is one of the first flat top cans. When they put instructions on how to open it and they tried to assure the public that this contained the same amount of beer as the bottles they were used to drinking, but if you find any cans with what they call opening instructions on them, save them. They're valuable. This one is in off-grade condition with spotting and rust and such, but it still has value because it's an old 1930s can. And again, anything that you see from a distance that had that big punch in it is usually an early can. Now we're going to go back to what we call cone tops. Uh, before we go there, I want to show you this is a gallon can. They actually had gallon cans and they weren't that popular because uh, once you tap them, they would tend to go flat if you didn't drink them in you know, a reasonable amount of time. But this is a gallon can and it had a apparatus on top, specialty tapper. And a lot of times these were popular at picnics or parties and stuff, but gallon cans have value. But just wanted to show you that something different. Now we're gonna go back to cone tops. And this one is called a crown tainer. This is a two piece can, this extruded kind of rib top. And this was sealed with a cap on top. Look for the convex bottom. Isn't that crazy that they pierced this one on the bottom? It was already open on the top. These were sealed with a bottle cap and could be run through existing can lines at a brewery. Uh, normally they would have bottling lines, but these cone top or spout top cans could be run through a bottling line and capped. 
This is called a crown tainer. It's in pretty good shape. These are valuable, set them aside. Even if they're off grade, dusty, have scratches and stuff, it's better to check them out, set them aside. Now we're gonna go back to what we call a high profile cone top can. It looks like a brake fluid or heat can. And again, the convex bottom, see how it bows in on the bottom? Says internal revenue tax paid. Anytime you see that on a can label, bottle, can, it is pre-1951. The government uh, demanded that this statement is mandatory to put on cans pre-1951. But again, this could be run through a bottling line. This one is from Detroit, Michigan, E&B, in great shape. You find any of these, save them. Now we go back to what's called an early, well, probably mid 30s can, but this one is called a low profile can and see the ribs around the top. This is an early one, again, a convex bottom, but this is real heavy steel. This is Cato from Mankato, Minnesota. If you find these low profile cans like this in good shape, grab them. They are valuable and desired by collectors. And now I'll go back to the earliest can. Well, actually the first beer can was a flat top from uh, the Kruger Brewing Company in New Jersey. And what they did, they uh, test marketed them in Richmond, Virginia. They didn't want to, if they were a flop, fail in their home market of New Jersey. So they sent them to Richmond, Virginia, and they were a success. So any of those 2,500 cans, if you find them, I think there's only one known, but those are worth uh, four figures, five figures even. Let's keep on track with the cone tops. This is the earliest cone top, and you can see the Schlitz Brewery believed in cans and went in pretty deep with a dedicated canning line. The ribs on this are inverted and debossed or go into the can, and this is what they call a flat bottom cone. See what that rib around there, but it's a flat bottom cone. I think this was 1935 or so, but the big brewers went in on these and uh, these inverted rib flat bottom cones are some of the earliest ones known. You find any of these, they're collectible, desirable, save them, keep them. And lastly, this is a quart cone top, not in the best shape, but very readable, displayable. They also came in larger quart sizes. And I just want to show you too, a lot of times workers, craftsmen, etc. I found these in basements and garage, but they will take the lid out of a can. And that's actually a cone top can. But if you find lidless cans like this, old ones, they have value too. A lot of times they're kept indoors in good shape. If you find any of these, keep them. Uh, geeks like me can actually have a buddy that will put the lid back on them and there's a whole art to cleaning them and fixing them up and that's for another video but I just kind of wanted to give you an overall broad band scope of beer cans to save if you come across them and if you do and you have questions uh, I'm a member of many clubs both of us are Steve and I at iBioBeer.com are passionate knowledgeable we'll try to be fair with you uh, we would purchase cans like this. We love them. We collect them. And I hope that wherever you are and whatever you found that this video helps you. So I'm Barry the Beer Guy with iBuyOldBeer.com. Until next time, thanks for watching.